student uh, library card initiative. Oh, sorry, I didn't wait till the recording. Um, so I'll just be talking about um, the Play Student Library Card Project. Um, so first, an overview of what um, the library card is, what the program is. Um, so PLAY stands, stands for Pines Library Access Aided Automatically by Pines um, using data that's provided by the school districts. Um, so students are given a username and password, um, and they're not given a physical card. Um, and the account both physical and digital resources offered by uh, Pines Library statewide. Um, so they get, you know, they can go into any Pines Library like any other Pines patron and check out physical materials in their home library system. And it is an opt-out program, so parents can opt their student out um, of the card with their school district. And those are um, so the two main goals um, of the program is to reduce barriers to library access for public school students, and then also reduce manual. And there was a digital only card initiative um, where libraries would go to schools and they would, um, you know, create the accounts, um, but that was, you know, manual process. So this kind of takes all of that legwork out of that. And again, it's um, work by library staff. Um, they don't have to, you know, create, edit, or delete any um, of the play card accounts. And they do have different circulation routes to concurrent holds and then no overdue fines. So that's another um, you know, great benefit of the card and reduces that you know, barrier. Uh, fines only apply to long overdue, lost or damaged. And it is separate from the regular Pines card so they can have both. Um, they're treated separately. Um, we have heard you know, benefits of doing of, um, overdue fines, but if they want more than five physical checkouts, they can use their regular card. Um, they expire yearly on October 15th, um, and I have noted little stars throughout the presentation to remind me um, to mention, you know, a change or a lesson learned throughout the project. Um, so this was initially September 15th, um, and we pushed it back a month, um, both to give time, more time for the school to provide files at the beginning of the school year, because usually, of course, there's a lot of things going on, um, you know, hurricane season in southern Georgia um, that can cause a lot of different delays. So that was, uh, you know, some of the reasons behind just pushing that back um, just to make sure there's no, you know, lapse in service. Um, especially at the beginning of the year. The pilot program was approved in December of 2018. Um, so Pines has um, an executive committee um, that votes on the policies. So it's um, nine of the Pines member library directors. Um, so that was based in Chatham County Schools. So that's in Savannah, Georgia. In February of 2020, um, they rolled out the card. Um, so 39,000 students got a library card account overnight. Um, and of course, you know, March of 2020, um, I just started happening. Um, so that really, you know, heightened the need um, for access to resources, um, you know, especially, of course, at that time, it would have been um, digital. Um, and I think that's where we last off, left off at then um, on the student card at that time. Um, so I've used, I've kind of repurposed some of their more technical coding um, language for this presentation. So it may sound familiar. Um, and then July of 2020, we extended a system who wanted to come on board and who was ready to partner with one of their school districts. Um, so there are more rollouts in the fall of 2020 and spring of 2021. And then by May of 2021, it was approved as of, at that time, um, we had rolled out 12 school districts. Um, so just current numbers um, across uh, 18 library systems in Pines, um, there's 38 school districts um, of the initial setup process, um, and most of those hope to roll out by, um, you know, by the time school ends. So there's always a big push to get those cards um, before summer. Um, and we have uh, 40 in queue, so that just means, or the library system, um, and they're interested in starting the program. Um, and as of now, there's been um, 87,000 or over 87,000. So fortunately, with the various digital resources, we can't pull out um, the play numbers, um, but we're always trying to figure out how to best assess, um, you know, what impact that has had on the digital side. Um, and the map here, so Heinz member uh, systems of uh, the green are active. So they have the card implemented um, the in progress. They're working on implementing. And then again, the light green are Pines libraries that have not um, come on board the play program yet. Um, and this is so monthly circulations this year, those, um, you know, checkout numbers were pretty low. Um, and then they've gradually gone up, um, especially with as, you know, more districts come on board. Um, last summer in June is that big number, um, the almost 8,000 and a huge jump. Um, and that was great to see, you know, during their summer reading programs, they saw a lot of participation. Um, and we definitely, you know, want to evaluate the patterns of, you know, the checkouts, you know, um, circulations by grade. Um, this is kind of interesting. We've definitely seen the most participation um, in elementary school, and we think that's because um, a lot of this is by the library. They'll take them on field trips, and they've really um, focused on elementary school students, um, you know, grades three through five. And this is throughout the entirety of the program, so since February 2020. 
First, I'll go kind of a, give a high level view of the initial setup. So this is from when I first have a conversation with the library director um, to the uh, first implementation. So that first kind of go live date of when we officially create just discussions and meetings. Um, so I meet with the library system um, and any other staff um, who will be, you know, or helping set up the project. Um, we then establish the contacts with the school. So that is usually the uh, partner with the library and also um, the IT staff are really important. Um, and before we can move forward with anything else, the library and the school system sign a memorandum of understanding. The school and library um, includes the data that's uh, requested and used to create the library card accounts um, and any other stipulations they have. Um, so that is really um, up to the school and library system are, you know, really specific and have a lot of different um, initiatives that the library will help with, um, you know, such as providing materials that support their curriculum or helping them um, get general usage reports. And then some are pretty bare bone, just what we do with it after that. Um, so once the MOU is signed, there's two um, main phases that somewhat work simultaneously. Um, the communication side is handled with, um, with informational materials about the card. So what it has access to, um, how students can log in, um, and it'll also include the opt-out information. Um, so again, the parents will opt um, and update files accordingly. Um, and then on the data side, uh, I work directly with the school. Um, so we do have a basic uh, file we ask for of just general school information. Um, so what schools are included um, has um, just all of their schools are participating, but we do have one system where they just, um, they're piloting with their middle school. So it doesn't have to be, you know, an all or nothing um, district participation. We'll pick up their materials that is based on the school. Um, so usually, you know, based on location um, and then Pines hosts an SFTP and that's how we do the file um, transferring the student data to the SFTP um, and we do uh, testing. We'll test on our um, test server to make sure that everything's imported correctly and that all the accounts are, you know, assigned properly. Um, and then once that's done, um, we have our rollout PM the night before. So when students wake up on that day, they have access. Um, and a note on a timeline of this whole uh, setup process, it has varied greatly um, for a number of reasons, um, but generally I have six weeks, um, but two months is a, um, usually the minimum because um, with the opt-out period, we, you know, we recommend sending out the communications to parents and students usually been a month. Um, so parents have time to get the information, ask questions, um, and again, decide if they want to opt their student out or not. Oh, and please feel free to stop me at any time with questions. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not a tech person. Are you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's a secure file transfer protocol. I'm not a great um, tech person either, but it's a secure way of sending files. Um, so you're given, you know, a, and you send files securely. So it's much more secure than, um, you know, of course, sending through email or something like that. So yeah, it's just a secure method of um, getting the data. And staff do not have to create the account. And I do have that process outlined, but yeah, again, I, yeah, <laughs> I'll definitely get to that part. Um, but yes, yeah, staff do not have to create or edit accounts. And we actually, um, they definitely don't create, um, but on the editing side, from the school. So if it's updated on the school side, it'll get updated in our database in Evergreen. Um, so, you know, if they were to make changes to the address or something like that, it would get overwritten with any of the, the staff. Um, yes. You get, or did you get in terms of uh, requesting students information or information? Yes, I definitely um, will get to that. Um, oh, the question was, did we get pushback from schools about the data? Um, we have. Um, it our, um, well, again, all the schools on, bar on board, um, they didn't push back because, yeah, they eventually shared the data. Um, but that is, of course, a concern. Um, but yeah, there are um, you know, parts of that. Um, so after the rollout, um, it's pretty much um, just kind of maintenance, um, again, of the data. The school district will send any new students who are on the pro or, um, in the program and then opt out files. So if, you know, a student does have a card created and they later choose to opt out, um, the school will send us that information script, runs nightly um, to check that, uh, to check for any new files from the school and it'll import anything that's new. Um, and that's just based on the file name, um, you know, new schools, um, if it, there's a school closure, any of that information, the school will first notify the library and then we'll notify us. And that's just so we have, um, you know, the home library information. Um, and then of course, um, ongoing promotion within libraries. Um, if they have this play account, um, what the benefits are and how they, you know, can access um, their local library and the materials they provide. 
Um, so some permissions, so this is kind of getting into the more um, technical setup side. Um, we did create a new permission that determines the circulation policies. Um, and we also created two new permissions. Um, one is to edit um, play card accounts. Um, and again, we have limited that to just certain staff members because we don't, um, you know, once the school sends their data. Um, and we also have this um, admin student card permission group. Um, so there are a few interfaces um, that we added. I'll show those in a minute, um, but that permission allows the you know, managing of that. Um, so here's the student data that we ask for, and we do ask for it in a CSV file. So I give them a template um, so they can work off of. Um, um, the student ID is usually their lunch number. Um, it's provided, you know, it's unique to the district. So it's not the 10, there's a 10 digit number that, you know, stays with them their entire, um, I think it's a joint state provided student ID. Um, any field with the asterisk next to it is not required. Um, we are, you know, we continuously evaluate this because also we, um, you know, have certain requirements of creating a library card account. Um, we have phone and email we don't require. Um, parent guardian, we don't. And then grade, we use really helped with just um, reporting. Um, so again, general usage reports to see, you know, how the card is being used. Um, so we do um, require that now. Um, so file processing and implementation. Um, I already told, so Chris, Taryn, and Tiffany on the Pines team, um, they can answer all the questions on system. Um, but there is, they created a Perl script and it's backed by a new student card database schema. Um, on the school side, um, certain elements of the school district. Um, so usually it's three letters. Um, we've kind of moved into the four letter um, since a lot of the, you know, they may do like Chatham County schools. Um, if they were to choose CCS, there's likely another CCS. And that is used for their barcode and username. Um, and it's also used in their file name. So any files um, they send to us um, start with that prefix. So that, you know, denotes um, how those files are being uploaded. Um, during the school year, you know, after the card is implemented, um, we do tell the school exclude those students because if they have opted out, we, you know, ideally we'd never receive their data. Um, but again, if they had, and on the Pines Evergreen side, um, I mentioned we create or we host an SFTP. So we create um, a directory or folder um, for each school district. Um, so they get, you know, access to their own folder. Uh, um, positive change in our system because we had started off with asking the school districts to create their own SFTP and then giving Pines access. Um, and we quickly learned um, this is kind of about them. They kind of created them in all different ways. Um, and Chris on the Pines side, he's the one who manages the script. Um, he was having to kind of retool everything to customize with the school districts. Um, so that was becoming one of the data uploads. So now that we host it, it's been a lot more, um, a lot more streamlined. Um, and again, the uh, accounts are populated with the school system data, and then each school is assigned. Um, um, so again, the script pulls, um, it'll download any new files uh, matching the naming convention, uh, which is the prefix and then a date string, a column order. Um, and then if the student ID already exists in Evergreen, um, it's considered an update. So it'll just update that account that's already there, um, you know, with the data included. Um, and how the you know file is parsed, um, the barcode and username is the school prefix and student ID number. Student ID number is one two three four. They log in using CCS one two three four. Um, we create a default password on initial account creation based on the date of birth. Um, so it's a two-digit two -digit month and four-digit year of their date, their password, um, update their account settings um, and notification settings, and then use the the catalog. Um, the school ID number without the prefix stored is in the primary identification field. Uh, we have the school name stored in the secondary identification field. Uh, populate that with a school name as well. And grade level is stored in the name keywords and then home library based on the school. Um, so to give an example of what it looks like in um, the patron user summary, so as mentioned, um, so the profile group is the play card. And we do have a little note um, info box that just says, you know, data is provided by the school. Um, so don't update or replace with, you know, um, expiration date is always the 15th of the year. Um, the card or the barcode and username will be that prefix student ID uh, combination. And then you can see in the ID one and two fields, uh, the student ID, the uh, school name, and then a name keywords, the grade. Um, so those are kind of, yeah, again, the main differences of what the accounts look like same file uh, format, um, but it will just have opt out in the name. And that's how the script will know, okay, we are deleting these accounts um, if they exist. So they do, you know, they are completely as the school side sense. And um, so here's just a quick overview of the um, interfaces and these live in the server administration um, menu in Evergreen for Pines. 
or, or sorry, student card school district configuration. So this just has a list of all of the districts who are participating in the program. Um, it includes their prefix. Um, we always establish um, one, maybe sometimes more um, IT contacts, um, and it has the file pass there. Um, so this is good for tracking. Again, any new district, district who comes on board, I'll put their information in this interface. Um, and my favorite thing is this active, um, the active column. Um, once I, so the day before rollout, I'll go ahead and change that, you know, from no to yes. Um, and then the script will know to import the file that night. The file, if it's kind of, um, you know, getting stuck or not importing correctly, I can turn off, you know, the activation. Um, so it doesn't import while they're working out those file changes. And then this is the um, list of schools who are part of so the name, address, um, grade range. You can see um, here the home library assignment um, and also you know, the state ID and just that information. So if there's any changes, um, and when we do the initial import, um, the script will pull the school data and just put it in the database. So I don't have to add you know, 30 or 30 schools at a time. It'll do that on the initial import. And then there's also this shows, you know, any time a file has been imported. Um, so I, I check this every day just to make sure, um, you know, files imported the night before. If they didn't, I can, you know, check it out and see what's going on. Um, there, it will be, it'll show in that column, uh, but we actually really haven't um, seen a lot of errors. So, um, and yeah, this is just a great way to keep track because um, I'll reach out to schools, you know, if I haven't uh, to go weekly, um, but, you know, if it's been a few months and they still haven't set anything or maybe they haven't set an opt out file, I can easily refer to this and reach out to them and just make sure that, um, you know, they haven't wanted to send a file. Um, so some challenges. Yeah, there's uh, main challenges are, you know, communication and all level buy in. Um, it is important that all levels of the school district staff are on board the program. Assistant superintendent um, is aware of what the program is because they're the one signing the MOU with the library. So they're, you know, the one deciding to enter into the partnership. Um, and communication with parents and students is really what this library card account is. Um, if they do have their email in their account, they do get a welcome email. Um, so we don't want them to be met with any surprises about, you know, what is this? Um, increasingly, this has become so um, about adult content. Um, so that is actually my least favorite question on meetings with schools, um, but they are concerned about what children have access to. Um, so, you know, with that, it is an any access or if they're worried about, you know, accessing like adult content on overdrive or something like that, they can opt them out. Um, you know, otherwise it really is, um, yeah, it's based on the parent. Um, and we really just want to get, um, you know, and then schools have varied in what directory information or data they are willing to share. Um, the main concern, um, some don't want to um, share the student ID. Um, I think one district is hesitant about that because um, accounts, um, and they were worried about hacking on that end. So if it was the, you know, the same as their password, um, but really they've all varied. Um, and we're working on, and I'll kind of talk, speak to this in a minute, but we're working on making it more flexible of, you know, if they do want to provide, um, a date of birth, you know, maybe they just provide um, kind of a dummy date of birth. Um, same with the student ID. Um, there are ways around that. Um, so we have one district thinking about um, just like number. It kind of doesn't matter to Pines because um, as long as, you know, it's clear what accounts are being created and updated, um, you know, and they could provide the students with that information. Um, IT staff skill levels have varied greatly, and a lot of that is to the two that we have now are Infinite Campus and PowerSchool. Um, so I think probably 30 of our districts use Infinite Campus, and PowerSchool is, um, you know, the other eight. Um, and I have heard of others, we just haven't worked with them yet, extracted and sent to the SFTP. Um, so it's Infinite Campus is much more flexible within the system to kind of customize that data and format it in a certain way um, that we ask for for creating the accounts. Um, Powers have to, you know, download it, make certain changes to the formatting and then send it to us instead of just doing it all through the system. Um, so that's definitely been um, a learning experience and I think, you know, we're stuff they work with. Um, and then sometimes promotion has been a challenge because they may, you know, especially if it's right before summer, they may, um, you know, the card rolls out, they give them, you know, their fly, and then they kind of, you know, they may, you know, not talk about it again. Um, so, and that really is, um, you know, that's where the library is really integral and just keeping that partnership, there's continuous promotion and they can, you know, collaborate to do that. Um, on the library side, it's just mainly been, um, you know, general, general library staff training, um, since there are differing circulation rules on the card, um, the uh, username and barcode, or sorry, the barcode and password do work in the Pines app, so they can, you know, pull up a digital barcode. Um, and of course, they. Um, but when they go into the library, um, you know, there's other ways they need to authenticate um, the student to make sure the right person is using uh, the card. Um, and then add too far in the weeds at that, but if you know, if they update to a regular Pines barcode, but then. Um, 
the you know parent or student may be expecting no fines, but then they're you know using a regular account, so fines would accrue on that. Um, and again, in, in the accounts, it will get overwritten by the the data uploads. Um, and another challenge is the, um, you know, either incorrect contact information or no contact information. Um, again, we don't ask them. Um, so with that, most districts have chosen not to provide the email. Um, some school provided emails do receive outside communication or they can whitelist, um, you know, the library's domain to receive account no notifications, um, other, um, but generally they don't provide it. Um, so there is sometimes, um, you know, it's more of a process to try to contact um, the student um, about books. Or sorry, long overdue, because I guess they would know the last. Um, and so future development, and this kind of speaks to the Pines challenges as well. Um, you know, just trying to figure out how do we make we uh, you know make it so as many districts who want to come on board can. So you know, we're not blocking them from being um, in the project or anything like you know technical aspects. Um, so we have some ideas for retooling the script. Um, I had mentioned flexibility in the data they provide, or you know, kind of how we get that data. Um, we're also working on a patron's uh, stat cat for the grade um, because restricts some of the digital resources. Um, so again, with the, the content concerns, um, so with OverDrive, um, we are actually, we tested it right before we came to the conference, um, but they are looking at blocking, you know, if a overdrive, um, this statistical category will allow for that. Um, so OverDrive would block based on the prefix and then the um, you know grade range that's in with ClassLink and Clever. Um, so these are single sign-on systems that the uh, schools use. So yeah, it's just everything's in one place and they would like the Pines or Play Card um, link to be right there and already signed in. Um, then kind of just be restructuring the entire way it was created in the first place. Um, but we do see the benefit of um, you know having that capability. So that's always you know that's sometime in the future. And then also again just um, trying to take all these unique customized um, situations and trying to figure out how we can um, you know provide access to all but without having to you know customize each I did include uh, links to documentation. So the play card policies and procedures, this is in the Pines Wiki um, is there. And then I've also, it's um, so this was in the hopes of, um, I was gathering you know, different information from the various IT staff at the school districts about how they handle these extracts. Um, so within their student acting, uh, information as I go and putting it in there just in case it's helpful um, you know, to anyone who comes on board. Um, and the IT staff has actually been really, um, they've been really great and you know, they're, the school districts um, to, you know, work out the file process. So it's not as much of a, um, so that, you know, they're not starting from scratch. All right, questions. Sorry, I, I may have talked really fast. Did I answer your question about the data? Okay. Yes. So are these changes um, um, sorry, coming to the main branch? That's all specific to fines, right? So is that ever going to be Oh, I think, yeah, if you want it, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Chris was saying that the other year is this, that you can just implement an evergreen and then you'll be good to go. So yeah, that's definitely possible. We successfully started copying this last summer. Uh -huh. we, okay. We have it to have our schools provide passwords and stack pass for grades and subtask. Passwords. Passwords. Yes. Do your schools have physical school ID cards with those student numbers on them? And then you consider so we with that, we leave it up to the school and library. Um, but if they do have the physical lunch um, number, um, some of them, um, they've made stickers with the prefix. So they just put it on there, their prefixes in their lunch card number. Um, we've had other um you know, kind of promotional material. One library system created a uh, bookmarks that has um, not their like actual account information, but um, it like tells them what the prefix is. You like sometimes I have that physical kind of memento. Um, but yeah, that's been that's varied a lot between the districts. If you have the school prefix assigned, is the prefix at the district level? Yes. Okay, so if you have the school district assigned the, the prefix, and you have those schools are the evergreen barcode completion feature to automatically put the prefix in, so that staff can just literally scan the, the card and it brings up the correct student account. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, barcode completion, I'll have to remember that. Or maybe they have, I just don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, I haven't heard of this. <laughs> yes. So I'm here, we're from Muskia, here addressing a lot of problems. I guess I have like, kind of two points, but questions. Uh, so you talked a little bit earlier about uh, field trips, but how do the students get to use the cards in like a very direct way? Um, so how they use it in a direct way, um, yeah, again, it does give them access to the catalog so they can place holds, they can go into any Pines library and check out any of the, um, 
the most kind of, uh, or the best way that we've seen schools and libraries participate is they're able to bring, you know, entire classes over and just check out books and spend time. Um, yeah, again, unfortunately, I can't get um, the numbers for that since uh, the play card permission group doesn't translate really to, you know, anything that's in, let's say, Overdrive or Libby or um, Canopy. Um, the digital use is probably, you know, higher than the physical circulations, but, um, and there's also been um, initiatives where, you know, they'll have kind of like a traveling library, so they'll come to the school in any other way. Yes. In, in terms of when you were deciding whether to make these accounts that are in a special group or make them real, what your process there was in terms of whether these were a way for every student service areas to get a full on library card, play card, for the duration of members who to check out themselves. Um, so he asked about the, um, you know, decisions going into why, yeah, I guess it's a limited card compared to um, a regular Pines card, the Charlotte Mecklenburg um, system. Um, so I think when it started off, I'm assuming it was just with the, you know, with no overdue fines. Um, and yeah, Elizabeth, I might call on you to speak on this more because it actually wasn't part of the project when it started <laughs> um, to, again, yeah, just, provide a way to, uh, you know, get library cards in the hands of students or cards in the hands of students. Um, and certain, yeah, I think that was agreed by the executive committee as well with a circulation policy so overdue fines, but you can add. Uh, and when they did, when they use electronic resources now to start with the mode of authentication and you know, give them access, that we don't have any way to allow as many kids as possible to have access where their parents wouldn't want, you know, that parents would take them to the library. You know, they're, 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 they're. Yes. So they're not getting a physical card, but somebody must be writing a number down. Uh, they log in with their barcode, so it's configured. Um, Overdrive, actually, they're already configured. Um, to accept the three letter prefix and the student ID, um, other digital resources, you know, test it out and make sure. So they do have access um, through that information. Yeah, and um, I've been told, sure. Um, and there's other ways, you know, especially if they're in um, the library, they go up to the circulation desk, um, you know, there's, You know that, um, even young ones. That's what I've been told. I don't know. That, that's what, if you had several, like even parents within our age, you know, mm -hmm. it's like your, your social security number. You just, you just know it. And they carry it with them, you know, through their whole school career. So it's a whole. Yeah. <laughs> and just keep um, and I, yeah. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> do that link to I just have a running spreadsheet of all the participating districts and it has their prefixes um so in hopes you know if the child is at a different um library than you know the one that serves them hopefully they may oh, okay they're with this district and they know what prefix is um you know involved for the student cards you mentioned that you would have a staff group that is allowed to that at the school if the school provided date of birth, it would be used to set the initial password. If they change that password and then forget it, our staff at the library able to, if they can't edit the user, they also can reset the password. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I think they can help them reset the password. And then the local administrators, they do have permission, so they can help them with that. The library has some staff who can yes. set the account with their own password. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We don't have a password. Talk to Josh. <laughs> Available for the libraries that they generate. We've had concerns about using it. Sure. Of course you do. I can't be more than once. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, so if a student changes district, is the barcode? What do you think about Yeah, so they may have um so yeah, the student moves districts, they'll have that account until that October 15th. Oh, and I can speak back to that more of the expiration date updating has the play card. Also, they'll likely get a second play account if they choose to participate, which we hope they do. Um, but yeah, they may just have two accounts, um, you know, at the same time. Um, and part of that, so they move back and I think, um, someone was telling us like that one child has moved back like five different times between two districts. Um, so then luckily that card is still there, um, at least until October 15th. Um, and that is reset with the data updates. Um, so any account information that we, we receive after June 30th gets updated to the following year. Um, so yeah, they would still have 
maybe two accounts um, for that time. So, um, and with, since we do delete the accounts um, with, if we got seen it as a duplicate, so it's not skipped, it'll just create the account again. So that's another good thing. Um, and schools never have to worry about removing, you know, students who graduated or moved again because of that expiry. Yes. We set up a copy button and it worked out just fine. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah, I think we um, started the beta uh, project was, I think it was with an elementary school that was an opt-in and yeah, they got in, you know, behind just making sure, um, you know, there's more participation with the opt-out. So, and it has been very, um, a small percentage of opt-outs in each district. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we have a Sequoia. It's not a, a Sequoia Regional Library System. They're not in Pines, but yeah, they also have a similar program. They do opt in also, and they were able to get them. Um, but yeah, the schools have put the opt out form in their enrollment paperwork too, and just have it as part of the student handbook. So it's, yeah, um, that's a good way to just kind of lump it in with all the other paperwork that I'm sure they have to fill out. Any other questions? Um, I do have my contact information um, with any other questions you have. All right, thank you.